Hi there, guys, and welcome to this week's edition of the Weiss Crypto Sunday Special with me, your host, Chris Coney. So this week, I want to talk about why Facebook has just bet its future on crypto. Now, you've probably heard this by now, but Facebook executives announced that the company is rebranding as Meta Platforms. So going forward, that means all their business activities will be bound to the metaverse, which is the alternative digital reality that exists online. So what's that got to do with making money as a crypto investor? Well, back to my basic tenant, which is economic activity is human activity. Wherever human activity goes, so goes economic activity. For example, when these global lockdowns started coming in, I knew that was going to tank the economy simply because it was restricting human activity. It was simple cause and effect as far as I could see. I even made a video about that at the time, so I'm on record as saying that. However, that's not the point of this episode. The point here is to discuss how human activity is going to be moving increasingly into the metaverse and how economic activity is automatically going to go with it. It's akin to economic activity moving onto the internet, right? That's This is now like the next phase of that. Now, one distinction with the metaverse is its interconnectedness, or at least its potential for its interconnectedness. Let's start with early video games, which were self-contained realities. One game universe did not necessarily have any relation to another game universe. So if you played Super Mario on your Nintendo, and then you played Sonic the Hedgehog on your Sega Mega Drive, they have absolutely no relation to each other at all. The whole rules of those universes were self-contained. And even a thousand different people playing Super Mario at the same time around the world, they were all different instances of Super Mario World, right? So then, thanks to the internet and PC gaming, well, actually, even consoles that connect to the internet as well, that meant we moved to these big, centralized virtual worlds that are known as these massive multiplayer online games, like Fortnite, Eve Online, World of Warcraft, and all of their their um, peers. So that was that was the same game world, but it joined together the experiences of thousands of different players within that world. Right? Remember, on the consoles, a thousand different people playing Super Mario, but that's a thousand different games. Whereas now, five million people at a time can be playing World of Warcraft, but all those games are connected together in one massive multiplayer online game. And they could be on an Xbox or they could be on a PC or whatever. So that's why I think Fortnite in particular was so successful that it was cross-platform. So it wasn't like all the players on PC could game together. Now you could have people on Nintendo Switches and on Playstations and on PCs all playing Fortnite at the same time, which is total breakthrough in terms of uh, social gaming. So now while these are universes, they're huge universes in their own right, they're still centrally controlled and ruled with almost all of the activity, the economic activity, being captured by the software company that built it. So with World of Warcraft, I think it's Blizzard Entertainment is the company that develops and manages that. Um, So they're capturing all the economic value, that's great. And there have been attempts actually to create like secondary marketplaces for in-game items. I think particularly with World of Warcraft, I remember one of these, I think the community created a website that was like a marketplace for them to trade items they owned in the game. Because at the time, the system didn't um, provide a mechanism for that, so the community built their own. It was like an auction site where you'd say, I'm selling this virtual sword, who wants to buy it? People would bid, the trade would be agreed, and then the actual exchange or the transfer of the virtual item would happen in the game. And I think when Blizzard Entertainment got wind of this, they were like, hang on, this is some economic activity we're not capturing. So they cracked down on it a bit. I think they even, to their credit, created an in-game auction system uh, to, to sweep that economic activity back within their peer view. So then there's things like the Steam gaming platform. That's Steam S T. E-A-M. So the Steam gaming platform is where independent game publishers and game studios can publish their own games through it, 
get direct access to the consumers and the gamers and build a business. But the problem with that, still centralized. And there are many instances where certain games um, have been removed, forcibly removed from the Steam gaming platform by the company, which is either damaged or completely destroyed those gaming studio businesses. So that's no good, is it? Now we're going to move to a world of decentralized gaming where all that stuff I've just talked about will continue, but we'll do it on um, decentralized networks where the developers of the games and the players of the games are all going to be equals. They're all going to have equal amount of power. So players, first of all, can truly own their in-game items because they'll be uh, crypto assets. They can also participate in governing the game, deciding which direction it can be developed in and so on. And they can also be developers themselves. They can contribute code. They can create schematics for new in-game items or anything basically the sky's the limit so with these games uh, uh, some group of developers might start the project but when when governance becomes decentralized well their power gets diluted or removed entirely and then the next stage after that so we're sort of in that stage right now the whole um decentralized gaming phase and then after that this is really where the the metaverse would would flourish truly is where we haven't quite got to this stage yet but when these games start connecting to each other say say you had a a world of warcraft and then say someone created a decentralized version of it and then you had a fortnite and someone created a decentralized version of it that's great you know millions of players playing the game at the same time sharing that experience now it's all decentralized and ownerless superb but you've still got these silos, right? Five million people playing this game over here, five million people playing this game over here. So the metaverse is when they start connecting to each other. And that's like mind blowing stuff. And that's where potentially you could have in-game items you could transfer between universes. So say, so you had a sword in, in, in a World of Warcraft type medieval battle game. Well, what if you could trans transfer that item to a completely different game and use it there? That is certainly mind blowing, and this is likely the world that Facebook are now preparing for. Um, you know that piece that I just said about in-game items and the ability to transfer them between games. Well, that's only really become possible thanks to crypto and blockchain technology, because you need the sovereignty of the asset and then the the uh, proof that there is only one of those swords in existence, so that it can be burned on one blockchain and created on another one, right? Because it's because it's virtual and blockchain technology is that digital scarcity piece that we've needed to do that kind of thing. So back to the point then, what's this got to do with Facebook? Well, researchers at Bloomberg Intelligence expect by 2026, the total addressable market for metaverse products and services could reach $800 billion. Now, my favorite word in that is services. I was talking to my students about this recently where there's a, there's a virtual world called Second Life which is, well, that's old, right? It's been around a long time. And it was pre-crypto, pre-blockchain, but it was obviously post-internet because it's online. The reason this is significant is because this was like 2005 when this happened, I think. It was like on the tech news, the first millionaire has been minted in Second Life. And if I remember rightly, this was a real estate agent and they were they had a business in Second Life in the virtual world and they were a real estate broker. They brokered the real estate within Second Life. So land, islands, retail shops, they would be the real estate agent for those transactions. And of course, they charge a commission just like you do in the real world. And they built the business to, to a point where they'd made themselves a millionaire in the real world with their virtual business. So that, that happened yonks ago. So when it says that Bloomberg Research uh, is, is looking at 800 billion dollars of metaverse products and services we're not talking about 800 billion dollars of virtual swords and artworks all the services around that which i cannot even imagine right now are going to constitute some of that 800 billion dollars of revenue the next point is that these virtual worlds are going to be the next social networks so this is the point we're exploring what's this got to do with facebook these are going to be the next social networks if people are increasingly socializing in these virtual worlds instead of scrolling through Facebook on their phone, well, then Facebook has a problem. If your revenue model is advertising, which Facebook's currently is, 
Well, then you're relying on this large group of people pointing their attention at the platform that those ads are on, currently Facebook. So Facebook must see the writing on the wall here in terms of people starting to turn their attention away from Facebook.com, which of course then there's less eyeballs on those adverts and it becomes less lucrative. And they're so certain this is going to happen that they, they've started, they haven't just started a new arm of Facebook to deal with this new trend. They've wholesale rebranded their entire organization um, to meta platforms. Now they previously acquired Oculus. So Oculus is a brand of virtual reality hardware. Um, and Facebook acquired them a little while ago. And this is a key piece in their arsenal. So the Oculus Play, where they've acquired Oculus, the hardware manufacturer, that's likely an earlier version of this rebrand. So back then they saw the trend, you know, towards the metaverse, virtual reality and so on, and they wanted to get a foot in the door. And also, you know, they're thinking longer term. So that was the foot in the door, but now with this rebrand, they're kind of full body walking through the door. So where's the investment opportunity is the question. Well, there are several different levels of opportunity here that represent different risk to reward profiles. The first one would be to invest in the stock of companies like Facebook or some up and coming uh, metaverse development companies like Globant. Another one would be to just invest in Bitcoin on Ethereum because so grows the crypto economy, they always capture some of that value as the key uh, transactional and store value assets in the entire crypto space. You could also invest in the token that relates to whichever platform has the most metaverse activity on it. So when you want to build one of these virtual worlds, well, you have to choose which blockchain platform you're going to use. So you could choose Solana, you could choose Tezos, you could choose Polygon, you could do it on Ethereum if you wanted to, or it's unlikely that they would choose that for that kind of thing. And so if, let's use Polygon as the example, if Polygon becomes like the most popular blockchain for metaverse activity, well, great. You can get exposure to all of that just by buying the Polygon token. It's Matic is the ticker. And you wouldn't have to pick winners. You just pick the platform that's the winner. The next level is you can invest in the token that relates to the most popular game on that platform. Right? So, so say, say Polygon is the most popular one. Well, then we're talking about picking which specific game is going to be the most popular, right? You could do that. And most of the games will have their own tokens for governance and so on. The next level deeper than that would be to start investing in specific items within that particular game, the most popular game, on the most popular platform. So like I was talking about with our friend, the real estate agent from Second Life, so they were trading specific pieces of real estate in Second Life. So this is what we're talking about here. Say you got wind, so up, Upland, U-P-L-A-N-D, Upland, is a metaverse virtual real estate trading game on the blockchain. So say, this is an instance of how you could do this strategy. Say you found that, I don't know, the, the Empire State Building in Upland was like the most sought after, the most valuable virtual item in that in that world. Well, you could invest in that. And if it went up in value, just like a real piece of real estate, you'd make money from it, right? But of course, that's dependent upon you picking the right piece of property in the right virtual world, which is then obviously on the right platform. So that all has to line up for that uh, to make sense. Now, as you go up those levels, the potential reward does increase, but also so does the risk, naturally. I'd say there's an optimal level there somewhere, somewhere between investing in the most popular network protocol token and investing in the token that relates to the most popular game on that platform. That's sort of like the sweet spot, if you ask me. Investing in the specific pieces of real estate in the most popular ga games, that's like, that to me just doesn't feel like a good risk to reward ratio. So mm, I wouldn't do that unless you're like really fanatical about that game you could figure out you know which one of those buildings or virtual items would be the most popular but for most investors that's just too much so 
There's the sweet spot. Somewhere between investing in the most popular network and the protocol token that relates to that and investing in the token that relates to the most popular game on the most popular platform, that's going to be the sweet spot. Or you can do a hybrid play. I've spoken about Yield Guild Games a few times. YGG is the ticker symbol for that crypto asset. That's like a big old decentralized hedge fund that invests in virtual games, virtual game items, players, crypto assets, the whole shit sh bang. So you could just like kind of outsource that if you like by investing in the YGD token and then let them <laughs> diversify the investments in the metaverse for you. In terms of further research, I think the best choice of research, if you want to stay informed about the latest uh, metaverse investment opportunities, that would be the Undiscovered Cryptos uh, newsletter from Weiss Ratings. So check that out if you want more active, more regular um, research on what to invest in in the metaverse. So that's going to do it for this week's edition of the Weiss Crypto Sunday Special. Keep your eye on your inbox for next week's episode. Until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.